Hello, this is State Senator Pamela Althoff, and today I'm here at the Colonel Palmer House in Crystal Lake. We begin Season 2, Episode 2 of my Living History series. I'm joined today by Mary Ott, who actually is the facility manager of the Colonel Palmer House. So Mary, tell me a little bit about what the partnership is here on how the Colonel Palmer House actually operates, and then we could go right into either the architectural features or the history actually of Colonel Palmer. Sure, absolutely. Well, the Colonel Palmer House is run by the Crystal Lake Park District. It's a facility of the Crystal Lake Park District. However, we're also home to the Crystal Lake Historical Society, um, which began in 2000. And so they keep their artifacts here as well as their documentation and information. Um, in fact, the house really would be an empty shell without their partnership here um, at the home. However, we are also owned by the city of Crystal Lake. So the city of Crystal Lake owns the home, five acres, and the park district leases the home and two acres um, and staffs the home and does the programming that comes from the home. And how did that happen? How did the city of Crystal Lake acquire the property? Well, um, back in about the late 1990s, um, there was a developer that was coming into the area and it was kind of a development agreement um, with the city and so they acquired this property along with the home. Um, you know, they weren't quite sure what exactly what the evolution of the home would be, um, but they did retain the home and when the park district got involved, um, they've been maintaining it since then. So they recognized even back then the importance of having living history within their community so that they could actually have something to be able to touch and feel and understand what that histor historical um, importance and significant to the community. So tell me a little bit then about Colonel Palmer. Well, the Palmers actually came here in 1841. Um, the home itself was built in 1858, um, but their family came here in 1841. It was Gustavus and his wife Henrietta and their two children. They came here from um, actually Nunday, New York, which is the western part of New York. Um, if you're familiar with our area, we have Nunday Township, and that's where that name comes from. Um, so when they came and settled here, he had purchased 80 acres of land from the government as a land grant. Um, they came here to start over and to be farmers as they were in New York. Um, they settled here and started to gain more land and by 1858 they were able to build to build this home and this home is really quite unique for a farm family. I mean it's an all brick sided home. Um, they actually worked with a gentleman here in the community that um, was familiar with cobblestone foundations. He was a mason. His name was Andrew Jackson Simons. He had also come from the western part of New York and so they were familiar with that architectural style were interested in working with him and Andrew Jackson Simons actually built the home for them. So Mary, we're standing in the front parlor of this um, historical structure. Right. What, what's the significance architecturally? As you said, this is the front parlor. This is where they would have hosted guests um, when they had people that were coming over to the home. One thing I always like to point out, especially when we get students through this home, is the photo directly behind us. Um, this photo actually is of the home just after the turn of the century. Um, the evolution of the home is that the Palmers lived here um, until just after the turn of the century and after that point they actually it became um, a place where tenant farmers lived so they were working the land and living in the home and this photograph actually shows one of those little tenant farmer boys standing there at the fence line but it also gives us a great perspective of what the area looked like at the time um, this is literally route 176 in front of us as we see it today and that would be what they would have seen in that time period and you can just kind of see from the entire photograph the vast um, students don't understand today that when they get in a car and they can go to Crystal Lake, you know, in two minutes, how far out of town actually, um, you know, the Palmers lived. So Mary, we're now in the back parlor as opposed to the front parlor. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit, um, my understanding is Gustav was relatively an important civic figure here in Crystal Lake. So talk about the relevance of that and how this home would have been used as a meeting place. And then about, again, any of the features here in the back parlor slash kitchen that might be important for our viewers to see. Absolutely. Um, well, Gustavus was actually one of our first postmasters here to the Dearborn Post Office, which doesn't exist, but in that time period, that's where the mail would have come in. Um, another really important uh, detail is that he was one of the founding members of our local Mason organization here. Um, and so he was deeply involved in that. Um, there has been some documentation that does indicate that at one time some meetings were held, maybe not exactly in this home, but certainly on the property. 
tell me too, I understand this home is plaqued on the National Registry? Yes, yes, it's on the National Historic Register and one of the main reasons that it was able to obtain that is the fact that this real this home is then very it hasn't modified very much. Um, there's been very little, it actually is on its original foundation in the spot where the home was built in 1858. Um, and so it was able to receive that designation, um, and we are the only one here in Crystal Lake that ha is on the National Correct. Historic Register. Yeah. And so what about in, in the room itself? What should we be looking yeah, at? Yeah, well, this is one of the rooms that was changed just slightly um, when they were going for the National Historic Register. You know, of course, they were looking at the home and seeing how maybe it was modified slightly. Um, in this room, this was actually two rooms. So today we stand in one large room, what we call the back parlor today. Um, but in the Palmer's time period, um, it is most likely that part of the room, one of the rooms, was probably the rudimentary kitchen. So it would have had a stove, kind of like we see here today um, that the, Mrs. Palmer would have cooked on. There would have been maybe open shelving and that type of thing and a table um, for food preparation. And then the other room probably would have been more the, of a private gathering space um, for the family themselves. So not when they were hosting guests, but when they were there in the home together. So now we find ourselves really in the entrance foyer. The parlor is off to our left, and behind you is yeah. this great staircase. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the craftsmanship. Yeah, well, the home itself is Greek Revival and um, Federalist style. And so what you really see is the offset stairs, which is indicative of those styles. The beautiful staircase behind us is a walnut turned banister. It is hand turned. It really is one of the most lovely features of the home. Um, it actually has, you know, it's not painted, it's not changed in any it's way. Beautiful. Yeah. And so it really is, gives it that kind of grand entrance um, for those who are able to enter in through the front door. Um, certainly, they're special guests who would have come and been in the front parlor and been hosted, or like you said, with meetings. This is the way they would have entered. This would have been one of the front bedrooms, but it's significantly larger than any of the other rooms that we've seen. Yeah. Um, an idea as to why that is the case? Um, well, we would assume that in the Palmer's time um, that it was the master bedroom that they would have shared this room. However, within their time period, it was fairly unlikely that they slept in the same bed. Um, so there's a possibility that maybe the room's so large because of the fact they needed to fit two beds in here. Um, you know, of course, it could have been utilized in other purposes as well. Um, there was some early thought that, um, you know, maybe it was used as maybe a meeting space. We had talked earlier about the fact that he was a mason, you know, and maybe it was used for that. We don't have any clear documentation on it, um, but from what we know, it was used as a bedroom. The interesting thing, though, is the home evolves and we start to get changes, um, as I had said, First it went to tenant farmers after the turn of the century, but by the 1950s actually, it was sold for the Palmer family. Um, the gentleman who purchased it, it was post-World War II, and he turned this home into a duplex or into a two-flat. Um, and so this room actually was utilized as that family's living room. Certainly. Yeah, and it was perfect, perfect size. Um, the bedrooms then behind us were their bedrooms, um, and the addition um, that's above our kitchen today was utilized as their kitchen and kind of their bathroom area. We're standing in a room that is currently one room, however, it was two when the home was initially built. Today, though, it's actually used um, by the Crystal Lake Historical Society. As I had said, um, they're one of our partners here. They reside here, have their office space, but they also keep their archives, their library, which is the room we're standing in here today, um, as well as they are the ones that collect the artifacts that are you know, relevant to here in Crystal Lake. So they have a Crystal Lake provenance. Um, and I pulled out some items today just to kind of give the viewers an idea of what we have here in our archives. Um, some of these are actually um, from our silent movie theater, the Gem Theater. Um, the Gem Theater was located on William Street in downtown Crystal Lake. We actually got a, it was called the El Tovar. This is actually the Lake Theater, which was a later name for it. That was one of our first um, talking movie theaters. It was actually our only first talking movie theater. Um, in this box, I pulled out some items from what was called Crystal Lake Community High School. Today it is known as Central High School. And so these are some of the artifacts that we've um, received from generous donations. Um, a nice sweater. This is actually a ladies sweater um, from 1938. And then finally, I also pulled out some items from the Crystal Lake Country Club. One of the um, golf pros there 
taken a swing as well as some scorecards and some magazines um, that they produced during that time. How would I get in touch with the Crystal Lake Historical Group? So you could do it one of two ways. Um, certainly you can go straight through their website which is cl-hs.org um, and you can reach them there. They also have a phone number here that's answered here at the Colonel Palmer House. Well I appreciate the time. Thank you very much and join us next month for episode three.